see my face, it's me, right? Okay, this is a video about the Trinity. Sorry for the, um, the light, but uh, <coughs> it seems somebody has replaced my 120 watt bulb um, <laughs> with a uh, with a 60 watt bulb, and I know who it is. <coughs> I got a question about the Trinity from uh, someone. It says, could you please? In detail, try to explain the Trinity. When I think about it, I keep thinking of three gods, and no explanation has helped me. If you could make a video which explains it without confusing me. Also, how come it's not found explicitly in the New Testament? Well, it actually quite clearly is, and it only comes from the New Testament. Uh, you cannot read the New Testament without the Trinity. It's not possible. Um, there is one God. God is one. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Remember at the end of each video I do this? And within the Son are these two things, which is 100% deity and 100% humanity. Both by the reasons I wear... Um, rings on this hand. So when I make this sign, I'm confirming the hypostatic union right here in these two fingers and the trinity in these fingers. And when you cross yourself, what do you do? It's the same thing. You collapse these three fingers so they meet. So they come from one and go back into one and you cross yourself, right? That's how Orthodox do it, right? These fingers are collapsed. And these are totally these are collapsed in on each other, and these are collapsed in on the palm itself. So the Father is the fountainhead. The Son is eternally begotten, and the Holy Spirit um, eternally proceeds from the Father through the Son. Now, um, the best language of that, and I may get a maelstrom of comments from. <laughs> Orthodox people um, chastising me to direct you to this, but the Athanasian Creed, which yes, it's not, wasn't written by Athanasius. Because it has obviously the Filioque in it. But uh, if you take the Filioque out of that, you have the Trinity. Not only do you have the Trinity, but you, I, I believe it addresses the hypostatic union too, um, which if you have a proper understanding of the hypostatic union in the Trinity, from an orthodox perspective, you would never go to three gods. Your mind would never go there, so the person I'm responding to in this one, I know you're not orthodox at this moment. Um, and very skeptical uh, about the name of this person, even because I've gotten from friendly viewers. Uh, Artemis of Alabama has said the Arabs, and since you're an Arab, um, no, I don't call myself an Arab, and neither should anybody else who has any respect towards me. Um, but... I don't know, there's certain things which I try not to get offended at, but I know are intentionally meant to be offensive, and then people try to ask me friendly questions, which it doesn't... I don't know, but, uh... So I don't know if this is a gotcha moment, but I can direct you towards the Athanasian Creed. Um, and if you are... If you hear Trinity and your mind goes to three gods, then you're either a Mormon... Well, you're just a non-Christian. That's not... That's ridiculous. An idea of a multiplicity being within God, if God is love... And God is love, we know that. That's the, the one affirmative thing that we can say about God. And there would be an interchange. There would be... And it wouldn't be... Um, psychotic or delusional or schizophrenic uh, 
It would be an interaction. It would be something that is beyond our construct, right? So when we say God is un unknowable, unimaginable, unthinkable, and then we talk about the Trinity and the oneness, remember, we have to go by only what is revealed to us. And what has been revealed to us has been the Trinity. And it's been consistent. And it also has been one God. Elohim. Which we call God. Or Elohim. Um, however you pronounce it. It's one God. But there's a multiplicity within there. And even in Islam. Uh, there's always been a magisterium of the we. Us. And we said it was good. And it's quite clear that it's not to, well, God, oh, it's God and his angels. No, 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 no. Don't, don't, don't start going off on tangents and confusing the words. Us, we. But it's talked about in the singular. It's kind of the beautiful contradiction, but not contradictions, but paradoxes. This, this is what, um, the Catholic, this is, this is all all Trinitarian, hypostatic union, Christian. So when I go the Catholic, even the Protestants and Catholics, Roman Catholics say this. Uh, there is no way of escaping. God revealed Father, Son, and Holy Spirit within the New Testament. When, when reading the New Testament, there's no getting away from that. And there's no getting away from God as one. So God talking to man with feeble brains that we have to try to construct different realities out of, and you know, to try to go to different things because our model of reality is shown that it's very malleable, right? Any sociology class, any philosophy class will tell you this, um, at least college level. Uh, but I don't know if they have sociology classes or philosophy classes in high schools. Certainly not in the. the Chicago Public High School, I'll tell you that one. Um, but God is talking to mankind, his creation, through his creation. So how, I mean, this is why idolatry has been such a horrible sin. It's not because it breaks you away from the faith, it's because it can break the faith. And you go into these things of this kind of weird, myopic, yet schizophrenic, view of, oh, okay, well, no, iconoclasm, we can't make any anything, you know, I mean, it gets down to Islam, where you can't even draw a picture of a, an animal or human, because that's, icon that's, that you're making an idol, and then it, on the other hand, it overflows in the excess, where then everything becomes an idol, well, then any, you know, everything's your god, of, you know, well, the tree is the god, and, you know, the plant is the god, and we have to draw blood, because this world, that's the, that's the, that's the, the life force, so it's blood, and you know, you're then you're the Aztecs ripping out, you know, 20 hearts a day or whatever. You know, it's it's the idea between the super uh, docetic spiritualists and, well, again, docetic total carnalists, you know, and orthodoxy doesn't buy into false dichotomies. There's many false dichotomies that people make, and it's a construct of man, and orthodoxy does not buy into that. So I would direct you to the Athanasian Creed, um, which again is, you can find in the English, uh, the British Book of Common Prayer from the Anglican Communion, or you can find in Catholic documents. But it's obviously not been done by Athanasius because it has a filioque in there. But if you were to drop the filioque, it actually does make pretty straightforward sense of it. And it would be ridiculous for me just to read that out rightly on on video here. I mean, that's just stupid. Um, but I think that makes that that pretty much sums it up when you read the Athanasian Creed. So I don't. Uh, I don't know what more than that. You say you can't understand it. Well, good. You're more orthodox for being that. Is There's no understanding God. And this is the thing that's truly repulsive about Islam is that it tries to calculate God down to just one person, one God, one thing, one... I mean, it's... 
it's hyper, it's like saying, oh, this is what Constantine did. Constantine did this, so we should take it to the nth degree and even push that into theology. And that's basically what they did. And you can clearly show from my videos and New to Christ videos that Islam is a manufacturer of that. There's, no, there's this one, th and it's, it's only this, and God cannot love or be loved. This is in Islam. Islam explicitly says that God is not love, cannot love, and will not be tolerated to be loved. And if you think I'm making it up, go ask a sheikh, go ask an imam. They'll tell you, no, because these are human attributes. But yet, your award in paradise is sex, and jewels, and honey, and milk, and wine, and water. Very carnal things. Giving carnal things to a being which has no necessity or want for carnal things. This is hell. This is wickedness. This is debauchery. And No, anybody seeking this paradise will be lost. And they will... Hell, for all other purposes, they might never even resurrect. I mean, this is... That is... Uh, yeah, take your your carnal mind trying to understand the tra trying to understand the magnitude of God. No, you go by what has been revealed. Well, I do this. I can't make sense of this in my futile carnal brain. You know, even though there is a universe. I mean, there's most things that we can't even even in science that we can explain fully, which we can do that with the Trinity. But still, our mind can't. Re quantum mechanics. We can explain these things and. If you talk about Newtonian fluids and non-Newtonian fluids, it breaks down. There is no non-Newtonian fluids. It's a, they're all non-Newtonian. Um, and or if you go into, you know, Einstein's theory of relativity. Well, how does that play out with Max Planck's quantum mechanics? Your mind starts to say, well, not both of these can be true, but yet both of them are repeatedly proven true every single hour of the day with our cell phones working and everything like this. So. Well, I don't go by the light. Well, if it's not true for you, then it's not true. That's a Scientologist line. That's bullshit. And if I were to say God is not um, one in essence and three in person, that would be bullshit too. This is what's revealed. Sorry. You play, I mean, with everybody in their dialogue, all the cards have been played by at least the year 800. Boom. There's nothing new under the sun. There's no, everybody shot their bolt. So you have to go to one place or the other. And going to these new concocted religions, even like Baha'i, is just beyond silliness because then they're just, they're just rehashing Shia Islam with Christianity and Hinduism and trying to sh reshuffle the cards and say, oh, can we get something better? And no, no, you can't. We've already had well enough thinking people for at least 4,000 years. Go back and, and read the early church fathers and tell me that they were not as intelligent or as questioning as you or I. Um, I mean, it, I, I don't know how I could go to explain the Trinity. Explain God. If you, if you experience God, you already know that. If you don't, then... You, if you if you experience God and say, "Oh no, he's not, he is totally understandable," then I would fear you're under delusion. If you look at God and say, "Oh my God," then that then I'm willing to believe that you've experienced God. The magnitude is so great I can't even speak about it. Ineffable. I mean, that's that's the definition of ineffable. But this, can you explain it to me in terms that I can understand? Never. No. The closest thing I would say in, descri in a technical description is actually um, the, Nicene, or the Athanasian Creed. So, uh, if you want something that you can understand, pray to God so that he gives you the Gnosis. Um, maybe in a technical sense, the Athanasian Creed, but you have to cut out the filioquate from there because the filioquate is a heresy and is a blasphemy and I'm already getting a call so take it easy peace to you may God save Serbia and Syria